And hello everybody and welcome to the first case study for the course and we're going to be talking about document similarity and this is simply how do you find a document that's similar to a particular document. So we will be using our favorite NLP library GenSim which we have been using a little bit in this course. So we'll get right into it and the first thing that we're going to do is just import GenSim and of course we've done that before and we're going to use the same data set that we have used in the word to vec lecture and that is that sports data set from BBC and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a list of all the text files under that BBC sport folder and once again this is something that we did in that word to vec lecture and we use the glob library to do that and we're going to use the glob library again and I will just copy and paste this code because this is old code that we talked about in that word to vec lecture and this is the output that you will get of course it is just a listing of those text files that are under that BBC sports folder so here is that amazing and long output that we get. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to read all the text files into one single list. So a list of text. And we also did that before. So we're going to copy paste this code as well and then run it. And then what we're going to do, we didn't do this part before I believe, going to just type in print, opening parentheses, double quotation marks, number of documents, colon, and then closing double quotation marks, comma, L-E-N, opening parentheses, raw, underscore documents, and then two closing parentheses. And this prints the number of documents that we have. So we've got 510. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to prepare and tokenize the text data with the methods that we've learned before in this course. So again, because we have gone through this process before, the tokenization process and all the pre-processing, I will copy and paste this code as well here. And we'll run that. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a dictionary from a list of documents. And a dictionary simply maps every word to a number. So I'm going to type in dictionary and you'll see exactly what I mean by a dictionary maps every word to a number. And we also talked about this a little bit in the word to vec lecture. So I'm going to type in dictionary equals gensim dot corpora dot dictionary with a big D. And then in parentheses as the argument clean underscore texts. And the next line print opening parentheses double quotation marks number of words in dictionary colon and then close those with double quotation marks comma L-E-N, opening parentheses, dictionary, and then two closing parentheses. So now we're going to see the first 100 words from the dictionary. So we've what we've done is we've uh, created a dictionary from a list of the documents. So we've mapped every word to a number, as I mentioned. And now we're going to see the first hundred words from that dictionary to actually see that we have indeed created that dictionary. So I'm going to type in 4i in range and then in parentheses 100 because we want to see the first hundred words and then colon to end that line. And the next line print opening parentheses i comma dictionary. And then those opening square brackets, I, closing square brackets, and then closing parentheses. And then when we run that, 
it tells us the number of words in the dictionary, which is over 10,000. And as you see, you see that every word is mapped to a number. So zero, able, one is mapped to the word about, and so forth. So there we are. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a corpus. And a corpus is simply a list of bags of words. Remember, bags of words from earlier in the course. If you don't, remember that a bag of words is a representation for a document that just lists the number of times each word occurs in the document. So to do that, to create that corpus, we're going to type in corpus equals opening square brackets dictionary dot doc two actual two b o w and then in parentheses we're going to put text and then on that same line for text in clean underscore texts and then closing square brackets and then we'll go to the next line print opening parentheses corpus opening square brackets colon 10 closing square brackets closing parentheses and what we're doing there is we're just going to print the first 10 bags of words and there you see your output as well. And the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to create a TF-IDF model from the corpus. And we've talked about this before as well. And the num underscore nnz parameter that you'll be seeing in just a second in the output is the number of tokens. So we're going to type in tf underscore IDF equals Jensen dot models dot capital T F I D capital M O D E L and then in parentheses corpus and the next line print opening parentheses TF underscore IDF. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a similarity measure object in the TD IDF space. TF IDF stands for term frequency inverse document frequency. As mentioned, we did talk about this earlier in the course as well. Term frequency is simply how often the word shows up in the document. And inverse document frequency scales the value by how rare the word is in the corpus. Now, according to the GenSim official documentation, GenSim contains three classes for indexing. And we're going to use the one that's GenSim.Similarities.SSimilarity. So I'm going to type in similarity underscore object equals GenSim.Similarities dot capital S similarity and then opening parentheses and we've got an apostrophe around BBC underscore sport and then the slash or forward slash close that with the apostrophe and then comma TF underscore IDF and then in square brackets corpus comma num underscore features equals len and then passing in the parentheses dictionary and we have two parentheses to end close that out and by putting in bbc underscore sport uh, forward slash we're specifying the folder that the similarity index object will be stored. And then we're going to go to the next line and we're going to type in print opening parentheses similarity underscore object closing parentheses. And then next line print 
opening parentheses, type, opening parentheses, similarity underscore object, and then two closing parentheses. The next part is we're going to create a query document and convert it to TFIDF. So the query document is the one that we want to find the similar documents accordingly. We're going to be using raw underscore documents and then opening square brackets, eight closing square brackets as our query doc. And we will try to see if our model would be able to find the same document as the most similar one. So I'm going to type in text equals raw underscore documents and then in the square brackets eight. We're going to prepare the text. I'll type in query underscore doc equals gensim.utils.simple underscore preprocess and then in parentheses text. And the next line, print and in parentheses, query underscore doc. And there's the output for that. Next, we're going to print out the bag of words. I'll type in query underscore doc underscore BOW equals dictionary dot doc to actual to BOW and then in parentheses query underscore doc. Next line print and then we'll pass query underscore doc underscore BOW. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the TF idea vector. So we're going to type in query underscore doc underscore TF underscore IDF equals TF underscore IDF and then in square brackets query underscore doc underscore BOW and the next line print and in parentheses query underscore doc underscore TF underscore IDF and those are the vectors now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to compare our target document and our target document remember is document number eight just look back a few steps and what we're going to do is we're going to see the similarity score for our target document so document number eight to all the other documents in our corpus and remember that there's 510 documents. So we're comparing all the other documents to our target document, which is document number eight. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to type in similarity underscore scores equals list opening parentheses similarity underscore object then opening square brackets query underscore doc underscore tf underscore idf closing square brackets closing parentheses and then next line we're just gonna type similarity underscore scores so these are the similarity scores when we compare it to that target document that we talked about and here are all those scores the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to see which one is the most similar to our target document the most similar one the score should be around one for that one because we used a document from our corpus that we trained our model on first we'll find the max score in this list so to do that max underscore score equals max opening parentheses similarity underscore scores closing parentheses 
and then we're going to print and then in parentheses max underscore score and then we're going to type in similarity underscore scores dot index and then in parentheses we'll pass the argument max underscore score and when we see the output what we see is that document 8 is the most similar one and of course this makes sense because that is our target document and it's got that similarity score of 1 as we talked about so let's print that document number 8 so print and then in parentheses raw underscore documents opening square brackets 8 closing square brackets and then closing parentheses so this is the document in question for me and now what we're going to do is we're going to see the second highest score and the corresponding document for that so let's type sorted underscore scores equals sorted and then in parentheses similarity underscore scores comma reverse equals true closing parentheses and the next line print opening parentheses sorted underscore scores opening square brackets zero closing square brackets and closing parentheses and then next line print everything else will be the same except in those square brackets we'll put one and this is the output so what we see is that the second highest similarity score is that second one right there 0 0.33 so now that we know the second highest score we want to know which document does that actually correspond to so to do that similarity underscore scores dot index and then in parentheses sorted underscore scores and then in square brackets one and then closing parentheses so that gives you the document in question so to finish things off now that we know what document number is the second most similar in terms of similarity score we want to take a look at it read it and make sure that it is semantically similar to our target document we want to make sure that they're talking about the same concepts so just do a print of that second most similar similarity score document read it and make sure that semantically or concept wise it is similar to that target document.